Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series where I cover a topic in about five minutes. I was on uh, Dibiase's stream. He was using the OPZ and the P6 and was doing some chopping and other fun stuff that was pretty cool. And I was trying to give him a couple suggestions for how to set up the OPZ he got and uh, how to get it to work. And now I have, you can see from the green there, I've got the line in card or the line card. And this will allow you to do some uh, sequencing from your OPZ to sequence the P6. And that way you can use the sequencer on the OPZ. A couple things you want to know before we get into it. Uh, basically, I've just got the MIDI in jack is connected in to the MIDI out on the line card. And then I've got the mix out connected to the line in on the OPZ. And with that, I can play the notes here. And similarly play them from the OPZ. Now a couple th things to know. On the OPZ, each track is assigned a MIDI channel by default, with kick being MIDI channel 1 and motion being MIDI channel 16. So if you move your channels around on the P6, or you want to move them around because you want to use different cha uh, tracks, and be able to use different parameter locks or other things. Totally cool, but by default, you're going to want to go shift menu and start at the beginning. We'll go down to S channel. This is your sample channel. So just for these main pads, whatever bank you're on and the pads, if you hold, hit enter, by default it's channel 11. So if I exit out, I can go track and the tape track by default is going to be the one that we can see is going to, right now, bank F or bank B, I don't know, maybe it's bank B. There we go, we're on bank B, pad four. You have to go look at the MIDI mapping, but it's, it's basically each note will respond to one pad on your P6. Now, if you're trying to do something where, which is what uh, Dibiase was doing, which was, had one sample trying to do the sample chop by just recording one chop at a time in, then you're going to be in the keyboard mode, which if we come over here, uh, go bank A, I go keyboard. I've got a, this as a bunch of chops. I want to go to track 15, which is the lights track. And you can see... I can play the notes. So I can use the OPZ sequencer to uh, sequence stuff over here. The only problem though is that the light sequencer isn't really, doesn't really let you grab any of these particular notes and edit them. I mean, I can record something though. So like, it's not impossible. I can play it. Timing's a little off, but whatever. Turn record off. Oh, I didn't have record on, sorry. So we get those in. So I, I don't know where it maxes out. It's usually like a lot of the tracks max out around three notes, but presumably I could come in and go do parameter locks and other things that I definitely know are on tracks one through eight. So if I wanted to go use those tracks, I certainly can. Now the thing I was suggesting to Dibiase was, you can go from here and then go do the tape effects, which some of them sound pretty cool. But the problem is the channel that we want to go do tape effects on is channel 11, which we can see here if you count it out. And if you go actually execute anything on the tape track, you are immediately going to be sending MIDI notes over. So my suggestion would be, if you wanted to just play around with this, come in, hold shift, go into menu, and change your A, not the A channel, change the S channel from 11, hold on, I think you want it 16. I didn't mean to get that extra note triggered in there, but it's there. It'll ring out eventually. So if you set it to 16, now I can come in with the, I've got the, that channel moved out of the way. So I'm not gonna be playing samples and doing tape effects at the same time, 
we can then exit out and I now can go hold down the I, go to tape. Well, I guess I don't have tape going to the correct um, module. There we go. So you have to hold shift down and tell it that you want input from the module. I just hadn't didn't have that set. But if you hold shift, you can then go set it to whichever ones you want to have going through the tape module. And now I can start scrubbing the buffer. And you can drop these around and kind of move around. Basically, the way the step sequencer works is you just hold down a button and you can select what you want. If you want to turn them off, we can, not a big deal. So I know that what I just did doesn't sound like super interesting, but trust me when I say it's worth taking the time to go through and like find where different settings work well and uh, getting them added. Because you can do some pretty fun stuff with it and really chop up a sample and do some fun things with it. Anyway, I hope that helps you guys out, shows you at least a quick way to kind of set this up. A couple of things that you might need to do for some setting changes to play with it. So you make sure that the tape works without having the tape also sending MIDI notes out to your sample channel. And uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Keep making music, keep having fun. Remember if it sounds good, it is good. And peace.